Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and another Escape from Tarkov video. We're gonna go right into another today in Tarkov and get you guys all caught up on what happened this week. Now it's been a quiet about 10 days from BSG with no patches whatsoever and a little over two weeks since we got a really big technical update or fix for any bugs. But this week did get flooded with information, photos, all sorts of stuff on Arena because BSG was at Gamescom in Germany. Now there was some rehashed info for sure, but we did get a bunch of new stuff that we hadn't heard about before, some changes, and other info we got out of the Q&A, the live Q&A Nikita did with kind of the crowd and some of the people in chat on the stream. There's some really interesting tidbits from that, but we'll go over the Q&A last after I get through some of this other stuff about Arena and things going on in the game. So first up, if you haven't heard, Arena is available for pre-order now. If you don't have EOD, you've got to pay 35 bucks for it. Uh, you just got to go to arena.tarkov.com and it's all there for you, which is where I'm sitting here right now. If you do have EOD, you've already got access to the beta. All you have to do is go to the website, sign in and check your profile. It should say this over here for you where it says, congratulations, you've got the game. Now there is a region upgrade region button here. For most people, I do not believe you're going to need this. I got a couple answers from BSG on it, so let me get into the specifics. When you buy Tarkov, Escape from Tarkov, especially EOD, you've got a couple of regions you buy from, and this is where the game can be launched from. The rules are laid out here. If you go into the Escape from Tarkov um, support section, basically CIS region is Commonwealth of Independent States. It's the old USSR, basically Russia and some of the other Istans and stuff like that. Uh, if you're purchased inside that region, you have to play inside that region. EU, uh, it sounds like it's just EU, obviously pretty straightforward, but you can actually play anywhere in the world. If you buy the EU version, you can, you can play connected to anywhere in the world. Um, and then other region is anywhere else, anywhere that's not EU or CIS. And you can connect from anywhere that's other region, but if you go into Europe, or if you go into CIS, you won't be able to uh, connect. So the way this was explained to me is that you will not need to upgrade this um, if you're EU or other, but potentially CIS countries might have to. I'm still not 100% sure on this, but I do know that if you're EU or other, you do not need to upgrade. So don't, don't click on this upgrade region and pay the $5. You don't need to do that. Within the rare circumstance, if you're somebody who's other and you plan on going to EU and you travel a lot or something, then maybe, maybe you want to do that upgrade. Now let's get into the meat of everything we got on this website, kind of mix it up with some of the stuff uh, that we already knew. Hopefully correct some incorrect rumors and get you guys the right information. But real quick, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that like button. It helps me out a ton. I figure if you're still here, you probably like the video and you're going to stay for more of it. And if you haven't, subscribe if you like these kind of weekly updates on news I do. I, I don't rush stuff out. I wait and we do a once a week update and get you caught up on everything. So you don't have to worry about missing a video or something being wrong because it was rushed out. So first up, let's talk system and uh, system requirements. I know a lot of people are going to be questioning this, especially because of Tarkov in general. These are pretty vanilla system requirements, to be honest with you. Kind of old if you look at standards. Uh, for the recommended settings, you want a quad core 3.2 gigahertz, Intel i5-7, um, or 3.6 AMD FX Athlon, or greater, obviously. Uh, GPU has to be Direct X Direct 11 compatible uh, with two gigabytes or more of memory. VRAM, two gigabytes, um, which I think that's the same thing. RAM, 16 gigabytes, and then you need 19 gigabytes of hard drive space on an SSD, which is always recommended. Uh, minimum is VRAM of one, RAM of eight, uh, Intel 2.4 gigahertz or 2.6 AMD. Uh, again, DirectX 11 compatible graphics card. So pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing compared to what you need to play Tarkov, especially like Streets or some of the other newer maps. Now for the feature list, I'll just throw this link down here. You guys can look through this yourself. I just kind of want to go through and look at some of the stuff they have up on here. There's a lot of new footage we got and some other cool things. So first up, we've got the, it's talking about bets are made, right? This is kind of getting into this style of where uh, Arena takes all the features from Tarkov, but makes it a little bit more arcadey. So you're going to be able to have PV or PV or PVP, PV or PVE, PVP versus E, all sorts of things mixed into there um, with Tarkov's mechanics, uh, which pretty much already new. Uh, equipment ready so choosing rating role presets requirement depending on the rank of the player and choosing role so this is our first glimpse kind of at some of these roles where as you load into a match you're gonna have on a role assault cqb scout sniper stuff like that uh and then i'm guessing that these roles are gonna have their own kind of unique presets and that's kind of how the game's gonna work according to nikita on the q a uh that there's not gonna be an inventory or a stash there's going to be a small section that you can use to keep like awards and things like that, but nowhere for items. All of your kits are going to be done through presets of some sort. 
uh, and those presets are gonna be bought with rubles and you earn rubles by competing. And this applies both in ranked and um, non-ranked modes. Now, in addition, we've already known two games, one character, and there's gonna be a crossover, right? So your character in your, if you're EOD, your character in Tarkov will cross over with uh, the arena character. And some stuff will happen with skills as far as your skills being leveled up in regular EFT from arena. Nikita pretty much said that the there's not going to be soft skills, if you will, in Tark in arena that come from Tarkov, like recoil or strength and stuff like that. That's not going to be in the ranked mode. And even in the non-ranked mode, it's going to be really limited. But they've said that you're going to be able to level stuff up. So I'm guessing you're going to get some kind of skill points for recoil and stuff that will apply to your character on EFT from arena while you play it. Again, that's an assumption and guess right now that hasn't been 100% clarified, but that's kind of how I'm seeing it. From there, it's the big arsenal, right? It's weapons, mods, medicine, other items from Escape from Tarkov, which we all know how many items there are. So there's gonna be an ungodly amount for Arena. Uh, we don't know exactly how that's gonna play out as far as how the presets go, if it's gonna work the same as the new preset system we have in the game now, or if it's gonna be something different, how you're gonna unlock items, all that stuff is still up in the air. Now, if you pre-order, obviously they're giving you a little bonus. You get this uh, Rigi series protagonist kit. It's wouldn't worry about it too much. I think the bigger thing I saw with the pre-order um, is that you get 10% more money earned. Um, and then Rigi's ge gear preset is, you can see a shotgun. It's kind of meme-ish. I don't know how much this is going to matter, but point being, you get a 10% more to money earned, which I think that will matter uh, as far as getting stuff in arena. Now for game modes, uh, they didn't talk about all of them, but we've got some info here. Shootout, round robin style tournament. You play teams against each other in solo duos, trio modes. Uh, most victory points, you move on, all that kind of stuff. Team fight, this is that two teams of five kind of thing, team deathmatch, uh, but with, they're, they're obviously not just team deathmatch, objectives, some other stuff that can go on there. Overrun is kind of a PVE style, uh, five players with differing goals. We haven't seen a lot of detail, but potentially fighting bosses, hordes, things like that. Last hero, I haven't heard him say anything about this really yet, much detail other than we've got here. Um, Deathmatch between multiple players. The goal of each player is to score the most kills in the allotted time. So maybe like old school Quake 1v1, maybe? Not sure. Interesting um, interesting way to think about or look at it. And then Duel, we haven't, you can't look at it yet, but they've always got it planned. Um, game locations, seven maps announced with many more to come, but seven announced, only uh, four we can look at because the bowl, uh, the box, and what's this last one? I can't read it, Resort. Um, those are not all you can't click on those but these you can you got sawmill which is kind of the same place like on the north side of woods the old that sawmill that's up there then you got bay five which kind of gave me a little bit of a factory vibe but also kind of like a dock thing this might be somewhere in terminal um or the docks on shoreline kind of hard to say uh air pit is a terminal in an airport we've seen some footage of this over the time or over the last few days we've seen or last few days last few years we've seen footage of this along with equator We've seen some footage from here. Um, looks kind of like a mall kind of deal. Uh, and then again, the bowl, the box and resort. We've seen a little bit, the bowl is like a stadium. I've seen some screenshots of it, but nothing more than that. Now there's more on arena. I'll get into that with the Q and A here real quick. Uh, I'll expand on some of the stuff that we got out of that anyway. But real quick first, I want to talk about some of the issues that are going on in Tarkov, just so you don't feel like you're alone and you kind of know what's going on. There are tons of problems with loading into streets and lighthouse um, and some other maps sometimes, but mostly streets and lighthouse. You'll just get server disconnected. You'll get booted. You can't get in. Uh, sometimes you can try two or three times and it'll let you in. And even then you'll be dead when you load in because somebody saw you sitting there and killed you. Nikita acknowledged this during the Q&A, but he was very specific that it was on streets. Now that might just have been a, just because he was going through it quickly and didn't realize it. And they might know that it's going on everywhere else because it definitely is. Um, all I can say is if this is happening to you, when you crash or you can't get in, exit your game, do a bug report, explain, hey, I was on this map, I was trying to scav in, or I was trying to load in a PMC in a squad of three guys or whatever, and I got repetitive server disconnects and couldn't load in, and then I was killed by somebody who could see me. Something along those lines. And then at least show BSG that this is happening on other maps in case they don't know. I think they do, but just in case, uh, this will get them the information, hopefully, that they need to get it fixed sooner than later. So if you are struggling, Getting a match, just know you're not alone. I know that doesn't make it any better, uh, but it is it is a known issue and BSG's working on it. 
Now we're getting into the Q&A. I'll uh, just roll the footage that BSG released today. We'll put a link for that down in the description. It's on YouTube, but we'll just roll that in the background so you guys can see it um, as I'm jabbering away going through the Q&A. It's going to be in order in which they did it, so it kind of jumps around a little bit, but at least um, at least it's in the order if you want to go back and watch it on the VOD on Twitch. So first up, again, they, they admitted that there's a lot of issues going on right now, and they, they kind of chalked it up to just servers being overloaded uh, because of the new wipe. And I really don't like this answer because it almost dismisses the problem like it's just going to go away when people quit playing. Um, that kind of is a cop-out way to deal with it. I don't know if that's necessarily what they're doing. That's the that's the feeling I got from it by them just saying, oh, it's just because the servers are overwhelmed because it's the start of the patch. That is not a very good answer for why people can't load in on scab raids. They can't, they can't even get into a map. They've got 20-minute queue times, 30-minute queue times. It just depends on where in the world you're at and what you're trying to do. It's, it's all over the board, and it's not normal. It was normal the first couple of days of the white, but normally it gets better. It hasn't been getting better. If anything, it's been getting worse. They did mention, somebody asked about the cat in the hideouse. Nikita said it's 100% happening. It's pretty much done. I just, we don't know when we're going to get it. Maybe next wipe, maybe middle of this wipe. Who knows? It's not a huge deal. Just something that people might want to know about. Um, people asked about Arena being esports compatible. And Nikita said specifically, yes, Arena is designed to be uh, esports. There's specifically stuff designed inside the, especially the, the ranked mode that is for esports specifically. So how that plays out, we'll see. One of the better questions that I like that hasn't been pressed in a while that it was good that we got some good answers on, um, not answers that are gonna make people happy, but more detailed stuff. And that is the map to map travel or the open world aspect that Tarkov has been talked about for a while. In this discussion, Nikita basically said that there's two more expansions of streets planned, which we saw. We saw that on the roadmap we got last month, but they have decided to push those to release. We will not see those expansions with the beta. They're going to spend the remaining time optimizing what they have so far. So where we're at on streets now looks like where it's at until we get release. This is a change to the roadmap. Not necessarily a bad thing. Roadmaps are plans. Uh, things come up and you've got to change them. That is what it is. The problem with that in my mind is I, I think the problems are more severe with streets than they were expecting. So they've ha they're going to have to shift their resources to get streets to run right uh, rather than expand it and add more, more layers, which that is a good thing. It's just kind of a disappointing thing that uh, we're not going to see the rest of streets for a while. Now, as far as the map to map travel, what he, Nikita was kind of leading into is the stuff that they're doing is the technology for that is also kind of playing in with what they're doing to make the maps better. Um, and his words were basically that hopefully technology will advance enough to allow them to do the map to map travel or open world, which is kind of a, a disappointing, scary thing to hear because that means they have, to me, that sounds like they have no idea how they're going to do it. They know what they want to do, but they don't think they can even do it. The technology isn't there. The ability isn't even there yet. And they're kind of just hoping fingers crossed that it comes along at some point. Uh, while they're working on it before they're done and not even before they're done. I'll get into that in a sec, but there's thoughts about using neutral zones or hubs or things in between the maps. So it's not really open world, but you're still traveling from map to map versus, you know, map to stash, stash to map and that kind of stuff. It, it's very much up in the air, which considering we're getting closer and closer to release is not a good sign in my mind that they haven't hashed that out because that's going to be a very important thing about how the game plays. And there was even a point when Nikita was asking some, answering some other questions that he mentioned that the open world aspect of it might not even come until might be part of a dlc which i don't know how you would consider that a dlc but that's how what he said that's was what's in his mind and i want to i should have said this at the start but i want to be very clear here you guys have to realize that this q a was done with mostly people that speak german as their native language talking to people that speak russian as their native language and they were talking in english so there is a ton of issues with translation and understanding what people are trying to get across and Nikita being on the spot. You could see he was kind of nervous. Always take all this with a grain of salt. It could be changed and provided in more detail or just misspoken when Nikita said it. So keep that in mind. Uh, Nikita did expand and said that there's going to be a new location for the New Year's patch. At least they hope, um, which means I wouldn't hold your breath which is the December patch, the next wipe, um, new location. He didn't say what it is, but I'm 99% sure it's going to be terminal. It's the only map left that seems to, that's going to be done that hasn't been talked about already being pushed to DLC and you need terminal because that's going to be where you escape from Tarkov essentially in the lore. So kind of makes sense that that would be the last map that they introduced. So maybe we see that in December, maybe not hard to say. And that there would also probably be an expansion of an old location, which again, he didn't want to say what it was, but he kind of tipped his hands a little bit later. Uh, again with the next patch i'm i'm more sure now that this is going to be an expansion to shoreline and before you grumble and 
Um, oh, Shoreline's already too open, doesn't need an expansion. Hear me out. Nikita said that there's going to be a new faction. It's going to be Russian Armed Forces. I don't know if that means it's RUAF or what, but it's going to be Russian Armed Forces, friendly to bears. So think what the rogues are to USEC. This is going to be for bears, and it's going to be at the docks on Shoreline. So we got the Shoreline map pulled up, and where I think we're going to be is going to be down here in the right corner. This is going to be the expansion area. For the longest time, I thought this was going to be terminal, but I'm less, I, I don't think that at all now. I think terminals may be across the river or something if you want to think about it, how the map to map connects. But he specifically said docks, uh, on shoreline expansion. This area has already got a ton of detail into it. And it's not like skyboxed, it's actually detailed out. The, uh, there's models for stuff that you can't even see. The Obviously, the 3D guys that do these maps, I don't know if they do it through data mining or whatever. I'm not trying to pick a fight there but the data is there it's not just some random skybox that shows up um so the work's been done so i'm thinking this is going to be it you're going to have bears uh not bears you're going to have a faction that's friendly to bears russian armed forces he didn't say ruaf but it could be ruaf it's not super important but it's going to be like the rogues on lighthouse for usec these are going to be the russian armed forces for the uh that are partially friendly to bears so maybe this is what balances it out between the two and it kind of makes sense um and that's just kind of what i think it is i could be wrong uh this could not be it uh this is my assumptions right now but i think they're pretty safe based on what nikita said now again as part of this conversation with some of the other questions linking it together uh nikita mentioned that the biggest thing they're fighting is detail there's so much detail on the maps that it just makes it impossible for them to make it bigger and actually have the performance work so it looks like they may be stepping in and dialing the detail back in order to not just make streets work better, but get to this whole open world or interconnected maps idea and have this the system be stable and functioning. So it's sad to hear that because I think that's one of the best things about Tarkov, but hopefully they can find a way to reduce the detail in ways that don't affect the immersion very much. And we'll just have to wait and see what that is. Another individual in the audience asked if uh, we were going to get more traders like Lightkeeper. Now, anybody who's been around a long time probably kind of knows the answer to this. The plan was that all the traders were going to be in raid. The trader system we have now is just to get us to 1.0, but Lightkeeper seems to be hanging up. And so it's kind of wishy-washy now whether all the traders are going to be in raid, if it's just going to be some of them, how exactly it's going to work. But Nikita said, yes, there's going to be more traders like Lightkeeper that are in raid. That's how you get to them. Uh, but we've got to see what that's going to work. I mean, Lightkeeper isn't even a trader yet. So they have to get that system figured out and then apply that to the other traders, however that's going to work. Because if you didn't know, the traders kind of are in their own locations. Like, I'm pretty sure Proper's in Terminal. Uh, you've got Ragman at uh, Interchange at some point. I don't know if he's there all the time. The lore kind of changes, but they're obviously in different places. And that's how you're going to interact with the traders is kind of the same way you do with Lightkeeper. And Nikita made one important point that I guess is really, it's a really clear point that he made is that Tarkov was not, is not meant to be an open survival game, open world survival game. That's not what it is. That's, it's not meant to be like DayZ. They want Tarkov to be as more focused on the fights and tactical stuff. Now this kind of contradicts a little bit what he said in the past, or at least in my mind, because he's always talked about, you know, what he wanted for Tarkov not being PVP focused, that PVP would be a special thing. Running into a PMC wouldn't necessarily be rare, but when it happened, it, it's not always just kill on sight. There's possible all sorts of scenarios in there. And how much of that is just Nikita's fancy dreams for he wanted for the game and was practical, I don't know, but it is a change from what I've heard in the past. So I wanna bring that up. And he emphasized again that the storyline quest is about escaping Tarkov, not surviving in it. Um, and that were, those were his words, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he, may, he was very clear to make that statement, which I've never really heard him say that before. Now for auctions, they were removed from the flea market. They, they've been grayed out for a while. They finally pulled them off. It's never been a feature. It was something that was planned. And Nikita said there just wasn't any reason for auctions because there wasn't anything special enough or rare enough to have an auction up there in his mind. Uh, and he said maybe when they bring back like elite modification parts, which could add bonuses like uh, maybe XP or some other things and just make them more personalized as far as stats are concerned that maybe they'll look at auctions then but that sound pretty pie in the sky to me I wouldn't think auctions are coming back I wouldn't plan on it if they do awesome if not I don't think anybody's going to be too super worried about it uh, somebody asked about skins Nikita said they are planned he says that about a lot of stuff they'll keep in mind um, and, but it doesn't seem important um, they've got some initial stuff for it and, and when it, they say skins they mean things like spray paint maybe some fabric that you can cover your rifles with, kind of quasi ghillie suit stuff, but mostly spray paint fabrics, things like that, or spray, spray paint fabrics, spray paint like designs that you would see most people do IRL if you watch any gun channels or anything like that. They joked around a little bit about Shootborn and Heaven Changes. They asked, somebody asked why they made it easier. 
uh, and the guy that was responsible for it, I don't think he spoke English because he talked to Nikita, and basically it was done based on feedback from the community. They wanted to make the quest a little bit easier, more achievable for everybody, so that's where they went. Nikita joked about, fine, if you don't like it, we'll make it harder again. I think he was joking. I don't I don't know what they're going to do. I don't think they're going to change Shooterborn in Heaven again, but who knows? Somebody also mentioned a more complex healing system using Daisy as a specific example, and Nikita kind of joked around about how he played a lot of Daisy, and that was his initial thought, but it was too too much. So they simplified it, but he said specifically there are a couple of things more coming. One is overdosing, which we kind of heard about that, um, which has to do with addiction, I, overdosing and addiction kind of stuff. But he also said resistances, which is a really clever thing. I I haven't heard him say it yet, or if he did, I missed it. Resistances, and he was pretty clear, he couldn't find the word for it because he was trying to talk, he was trying to find the, the word in English for it, but um, that's what he was trying to get at because reduce effectiveness, things like that, which I think is really interesting that like if you use a bunch of stims, not only do you potentially get addiction and stuff, but maybe the, the effects are not as more powerful. This could be another thing you could use for pain meds as far as to keep people from constantly spamming them, uh, making them less effective, things like that. I think it's really interesting. Uh, I think it's a cool idea. I can't wait to see how it's implemented. Great question somebody asked was talking about DLC for Arena. And we got a pretty straightforward answer on it. There will be no DLC for Arena. And that doesn't mean there's not gonna be new content. That just means they're not gonna charge for it. Uh, Nikita said Arena is gonna operate in seasons and seasons will bring new stuff, but you don't have to pay for it. It's just gonna be part of the game. So as time goes on, we're gonna get new content, new maps, new things. Maybe maps get turned off, some get turned on or they get changed, whatever. I'm just throwing ideas out. Uh, that stuff comes with the purchase of the game. You don't have to buy more stuff to get that DLC. Another long ago question that hasn't been brought up much. Somebody asked about a mobile version of the hideout. Um, Nikita Base said there's going to be a companion app planned, hopefully before release, uh, that's going to let you do things like collect your crafts, collect your insurance, but probably not do full inventory management. Um, he was specific enough, specific enough that, that means you probably won't be able to start crafts or buy things or sell things on the flea, stuff like that. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, it's something that's been long in the works, but probably backburnered and maybe, and hopefully again, we see it before release, but we'll see. And then uh, I talked about this a little bit already, uh, but I want to emphasize it again because a lot of people are spooled up over this the last couple of days and it's character skills in arena. Um, I'm looking at my notes specifically here, so I read it right. It says ranked games won't have varying skills. Unranked depends, but will be very limited. So he understands that you can't just have higher strength on different people because then that's not fair competitive matchmaking, um, which there's another matchmaking altogether for that. I'll talk about that in a sec. But uh, so I wouldn't worry about arena having skills. How that system's gonna work between interaction. I know what they've said in the past about leveling up your characters across the different games, but obviously it was pretty clear that the rank system isn't gonna have skills uh, that can make unfair advantages for high level players versus low level players. Now with this, he let something go uh, that he that said he wasn't planning on. Um, I don't know how serious he was or not. We're, there's gonna be co uh, cosmetics through EFT, through the prestige system, stuff that will save and be persistent through your wipe. There's gonna be this kind of hall of fame in your hideout where you can you do stuff like prestige, some of the awards you get from arena. Um, if you have EOD, obviously, that you can bring those over to your hideout um, and they persist through the wipe. What this led to is there's gonna be some things, there's gonna be like special lootable items, which sometimes is just guns, but other gear or awards or something on Arena that go to this, as well as in uh, e in EFT, in the actual Tarkov game mode, uh, there's going to be like Magic the Gathering cards of sort that are basically preset kits. They're special, you'll find them in Raid and you can use them, um, which is kind of crazy to think that you might have some kind of crazy, you know, loadout that's only available if you find it in Raid on Tarkov and how that works out, how that plays out, how that balances. I have no idea. I don't want to get into it yet. It was just a really cool idea, something Nikita mentioned that he said he didn't mean to, but he did. And with this, it sounds like this just how Arena is going to work. It's going to be with uh, preset kits. On unranked mode, you can select any kit you want, but on ranked mode, you need to invest money into kits. You can collect pre kits and gear that get you a little bit more money or something, and that money's used to level up your kits. I'm thinking of something kind of how CSGO or Valorant works, maybe not match to match, but you know, you buy a kit at the start of a raid. If you have more money, you can get a more bigger kit, but it's it's riskier, and we all know how Tarkov works. Even if you got an alt and face shield on, you can get killed by somebody with a pistol. It doesn't happen often, but it can. So it's gonna be interesting um intriguing i keep saying that word i using it over and over again i'm super super anxious to see how this all plays out because they've obviously put a ton of thought into it i don't think they're gonna fuck it up i think it's gonna be really well thought out and looked at so just how it balances is, gonna, is the big question mark for me now the beta test is gonna be this year 
Uh, it was funny because Dimitri said he was talking. He's like, somebody asked, and he's like, well, we know, we know. And Nikita's like, it's this year. We still need to do polishing. That it was kind of funny to watch that dynamic. But uh, they apparently they have a date set in their mind. Um, it's not going to be a closed beta. Basically, if you pre-order it, you're going to play it. It's not going to be like only streamers get to play it or something like that. Um, if you if you pre-order it, you will get to play the beta. The rest of this is pretty. This pretty much all the arena stuff. The rest of this is going to be focused primarily on Tarkov itself. First up, there's another graphic overhaul planned at some point before release. Uh, that's going to change all the visual the visuals of the game, um, including lighting. So what that means, where we go with that, I have no idea. Uh, I, we've known they've been working on it for a while. Um, it potentially makes the game run better because you can simplify textures, all sorts of stuff. Just getting the game up to uh, tech on where it is now, considering it's been in uh, being made for, you know, eight, eight years now, whatever it is. Somebody mentioned something about scav on scav violence. Um, which I know a lot of people get frustrated with. They want more punishments for bad scavs. Nikita basically just said, that's not how it is. This is Tarkov. They're looking at a new system and maybe some events where it's like a free for all where everybody can kill everybody and you don't lose karma. And then another event where you have to be nice all the time or you get into a lot of trouble or something. So we'll just see, keep in mind guys that scavs are a, a secondary thing to the rest of the game. If we get any attention on them, great, but I wouldn't expect it. Somebody was asked, there was a lot of questions, kind of people that didn't really know what they were asking, but Nikita used the opportunity to expand on it. And one of them was more about this, how this interaction between players and um, on the different different games work between EFT and uh, Arena. And Nikita said that there's going to be tasks in EFT that are part of Arena, whether you have to go into Arena, do them, or there's items in Arena. And the guy was like, well, what happens if I don't have Arena? Am I just screwed? I can't do those tasks. And and Nikita said, well, I guess you have to get in the, you don't do the task or you don't get, uh, or, or go get arena or something along those lines. Um, and I, I imagine that that might be the case, but it's probably not going to anything. It's going to keep you from leaving Tarkov or doing some of the other stuff. It's going to be like bonus. If you have arena, great, here's some extra stuff you can do that's crossover just so it's cool because you did do that. Now for a long time, Nikita has talked about, or at least a long time ago, he mentioned that he likes the idea of two profiles on Tarkov, one that wipes, one that doesn't. He likes wipes. He thinks they're a cool mechanic. They're needed to keep the game fresh, but he understands people that don't want to wipe. So their plan is to have two profiles. And this is the first time he's really specifically mentioned this in probably two years, I think. So it was good to hear it, that they're still planning that. And it kind of confirms it again, but again, no details. It doesn't look like they've given a lot of thought of exactly how they're going to do that yet. Um, and that could just be a product because they're not worried about it or they're just busy with everything else. And they haven't got to that bridge yet. And another good thing that I think a lot of people are going to be happy to hear is that the EFT, EFT is not going to have matchmaking. Tarkov is not going to have any special matchmaking like Arena will, where you play with people your skill level. Uh, but what they're going to do is a starter area in Tarkov, which essentially is only going to be, it's going to be level locked. So only people up to level 15 or 20 can be in there. I imagine you can leave it earlier if you wanted to, um, maybe at some point, but nobody above like, let's say level 21s can't go into this area. So no more running around on custom stomping Timmy's, which I think is a good thing. I think it is good that once you get your feet under you, you should run into all sorts of skill levels of players. But once you, when you're trying to figure the game out, it's just, it adds that extra little bit of cliff to the, uh, the learning curve. They quickly mentioned something about radiation. Um, it's still planned. It, it could be DLC. It could be four. I don't know, but they still want to put radiation in there. And then one of the last questions, which is a really, really good question. And I had never thought about this was faction specific extracts. For example, you have RUAF extracts or you have uh, uh, UN extracts and things like that, right? Think woods or customs or some of these others. And the reason this is important is everybody will be able to use these extracts is what Nikita said. So bear usec it doesn't matter you're going to be able to use either one but the requirements might be different they might be more difficult to use you know if you're bear and you're trying to use an untar exit exit uh, uh like on customs uh maybe you have to have extra money maybe you've got to do some kind of yellow flare maybe you got to put your guns in your bag who knows ideas run wild but it, it i think that's gonna be a really interesting aspect that yeah sure you can use every extract you want but if you want to use this one and you're not the right faction, there might be some extra steps. I think that's super cool. All right, well, that's it. That was a long chat. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out, staying with me this long. If you did, I hope you got a bunch out of this. Uh, quick shout out for my music, as I always do at the end of my videos. It's my music, it's free to listen to. Links down below to Spotify. It supports me and it's free. And if you're a content creator, you are more than welcome to use it in your own YouTube videos or Twitch streams without the fear of copyrights or DMC takedowns. We don't do that shit. All we ask is that you guys 
uh, attribute us so people know where to find it if they want to listen to it too. But we'll sign off there. I appreciate you guys as always. I wish you the best of luck in raids and we'll see you in Tarkov.